So the Santa Fe Hybrid has been a little bit hard to come by recently due to its popularity. And today I have the entry level blue trim, which is based upon the base SEL and the gasoline powered versions. However, not only gets the exterior styling from the SEL premium and some of the higher trims, but also gets a few of the options on the inside as well. Does that make it the best value in the lineup? Well, that's for you to decide. So now before we get into the walk around portion on the blue hybrid, I do want to show you the exterior accents differences right next to a base SEL gasoline powered Santa Fe. So immediately you can tell the differences are going to lie in the front grille. And this used to be the styling found on the SEL and higher in the gas versions. However, Hyundai did change that for the 2023 model year. Uh, so do keep that in mind is that every hybrid will get this styling. However, you do have to get an SEL premium in the gas Santa Fe to get the brighter front grille and a few other cosmetic accents. And that is actually the top calligraphy trim which i haven't done a video here on the channel because that's the first one that has actually been available and that does get a unique accent so these are kind of the three exterior uh, grill designs outside of the xrt which i guess i could technically pull one up and put it there uh, but these are the main three that you will see out there on the santa fe so immediately you can tell side by side here you're going to get the standard black grill on the base se or sel versus that of the blue hybrid where you do get the nice chrome front end. This continues on for the lower portions of the front bumper versus that of the more satin gray finish down below over here. Around the side of the vehicle, the only real difference is gonna be here on the lower trim. On the door panels, you can see there it is a little bit more of a bright trim. And over here, it's just the standard matte black plastic. For the rear bumper, it's gonna continue on here on the sides of the vehicle. So right here, the bright work versus that of just the standard black plastic. And around the exhaust tip is also gonna be a little bit brighter. You can see here on the lower bumper versus that of the kind of more satin gray finish over here on the lesser gas version. So like I said, every hybrid will get this exterior trim. So the vehicle in front of us is finished in the Calypso red exterior with the beige cloth interior. Now, if you follow along on the channel, you'll know I also did a video on a 2023 Santa Fe Hybrid Limited, which is the top trim in the hybrid lineup, finished in the same interior as well as the exterior color. So I recommend checking that video out if you guys are curious what the top hybrid limited has to offer over say something like this blue. But anyways, like I said, you do get the chrome exterior styling, which is certainly an upgrade to most people out there over that of the standard SE and SEL grills, uh, both on the front and back. All hybrids will come with the LED lighting up front. However, this is the base LED reflector headlights over that of the LED projectors on that top limited. You have your LED daytime running lights and incandescent turn signal in this quadrant right here. No front cameras or anything as this particular vehicle doesn't have a 360 camera system. It does come with smart cruise control, highway drive assist one, which is really nice and standard across every Santa Fe. And lastly, you do have air curtains on either side of the front bumper to help with aerodynamics and fuel efficiency. Coming to the wheels and tires, this is a unique aspect to the blue trim as it does get unique 17 inch alloy wheels finished in a machine and dark gray finish. I assume this helps with better aerodynamics and fuel efficiency uh, because this is the highest fuel efficient Santa Fe you can get outside of a plug-in hybrid. These are wrapped in 235, 65, 17 inch Kumo all season tires. So pretty standard issue all season right there. You do have the black body cladding. Unfortunately, you can't get paint match cladding on any trim outside of the Calligraphy Santa Fe, which is only a gasoline powered Santa Fe. I really wish they would have offered some paint match versions on either the hybrid or plug-in hybrids as well. You have body color mirror caps with LED turn signal integration and some gloss black accents. They are gonna be heated, do have blind spot detection. Proximity entry on both front door handles. This does have Hyundai Digital Key 1, so you can use Android compatible smartphones to open and control the vehicle, uh, which is nice if you wanna leave the proximity key at home. You can see all the nice silver bright work here on the lower section, as well as around the windows, and of course the roof rails up top. Definitely stands out here on this red color, as you don't see them too, too often um, on most SUVs these days. Out back, you do have LED lighting as far as the tail lights and uh, incandescent reverse lights, unfortunately, uh, but the turn signals are gonna be lower on the bumper. And again, these are going to be LED. You do have rear parking sensors, which is another nice feature. More of that chrome bright work down below and a blue badge to signify that this is a hybrid Santa Fe, along with the H-Track hybrid badge here on the right side. Here's your backup camera just above the license plate. And you will notice that there's actually no exhaust tip or anything um, on the rear fascia. That is a small difference versus that of the standard Santa Fe's that do have the gasoline engine. Uh, but normally the exhaust tip would be right here on the right side. But nonetheless, that is a look at the hybrid blue trim. Pretty standard issue stuff. It's really a little bit difficult to tell a hybrid 
from a regular Santa Fe apart other than the badging. And of course, if you do recognize the wheels, that is another difference. Let's go ahead and take a look at the window stick really quick so you guys know exactly the accessories and features on this particular hybrid. And then we'll dive into the interior. So take a look at this particular vehicle. Once again, the Calypso Red with the beige interior. Uh, Calypso Red is an extra cost paint color for $450. This one has quite a few of additional accessories, uh, which brings the total MSRP to $38,765, including destination. And one other thing to note that is somewhat important to this vehicle is that they are actually built or assembled in Montgomery, Alabama, similar to that of the gasoline powered Santa Fe's. Now, unfortunately, the plug-in hybrids are still produced overseas in Korea, uh, but given that these are built in Alabama, they are becoming more available more quickly. So typically you should see the hybrids on the dealership lots, very similar uh, to that of the gasoline power versions, uh, just a few weeks after they pro were produced in some cases. So that is a nice benefit of them being assembled here in North America is the arrival time to dealerships. So take a look on the interior. Once again, this is the beige two-tone interior. Looks very sharp here on the red exterior. Starting out here on the door panel, you do have the standard SCL kind of door panel with the soft touch uppers, the dark gray patterned insert with the beige center section. This is all soft touch with some accent stitching. Power windows, mirrors, and locks. And you do get automatic front two windows in the blue hybrid. Silver accent door handle pole and a good amount of storage down below with a bottle holder. Coming to the driver's seat, this is going to be a power driver's seat with two-way power lumbar. And there is the two-tone cloth seats. I like the perforations in the seats that kind of make the, the black cloth stand out uh, versus that of the only beige. And there's the black steering wheel with the beige accented dashboard. Now here on the interior, one of the aspects, like I mentioned early on in this video, is the fact that every hybrid will get the 12.3 inch fully digital gauge cluster, which certainly has a more premium touch versus that of the standard analog and partially digital cluster. Um, now, unfortunately, this does not have the surround view monitor system, so you do not get the blind view monitors when you turn on your turn signal. It is basically just the gauge cluster without that functionality. Still a huge upgrade in my opinion. Now this one being a hybrid will come with some of the unique hybrid elements such as the EV indicator up top uh, to tell you that it is in battery only mode. You have unique graphics which are a little bit different in uh, color and overall just a few additional touches that signify that this is a hybrid. This does have a black leather wrap steering wheel which is nice. Paddle shifters on the back for the six speed automatic transmission. Audio Bluetooth controls on the left side. On the right side, you do have lane fall assist, smart cruise control, and of course, this does have highway drive assist if you are on an applicable interstate. Automatic headlights with auto high beam assist. Normal regular wiper stock here on the right side. To the left of the steering wheel, your gauge illumination, lane keeping assist on off, power tailgate, traction control, and there is your electronic parking brake as well. I do like the accent color of the beige that runs across the dashboard around the infotainment system and onto the passenger side of the vehicle. This is the 10 and a quarter inch infotainment with built-in navigation standard on everything but the entry level SC gas versions. Uh, this was new for 2023 as far as the trim level that it is on. I really do like this infotainment. Of course, it only has wired Android Auto, wired Apple CarPlay because it does have built-in navigation, but nonetheless, I think it is a worthy trade-off. It does have your driver profiles up there in the corner and a unique hybrid page because this is, again, the hybrid version of the vehicle, which tells you your battery status, uh, the electric motor use, the average fuel economy, including the battery consumption and everything like that. Uh, Sirius XM, AM, FM, USB, Bluetooth inputs as well. Uh, so a really nice head unit, just unfortunate that it doesn't have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now this being a Santa Fe, you will have a ton of physical controls, which I am a huge fan of. I really wish more manufacturers would go away from using the touch controls, uh, but that is one of the aspects I really do enjoy about the Santa Fe. Push button gear selection for the transmission. There's your automatic dual zone climate control, um, including the automatic three settings that will limit the fan speed, uh, depending on the setting that you have the temperature at. Driver only mode is unique to hybrid vehicles. There's your all wheel drive, drive mode select with a center differential lock to split power 50-50 front and rear. Automatic brake hold, hill descent control, parking sensors on off, and this is your backup camera button so you can pull that up at any time. Heated front seats, no heated steering wheel, unfortunately. There's your cover for the cup holders and the USB-A charge port. This is your wireless charging pad and Hyundai digital keypad indicator. So you simply slide your phone in vertically and that will charge or use the digital keypad. 
There's your proximity key fob with remote start on the fob. Of course, this does have blue link as well. Soft touch padded armrest, good amount of storage inside with a little insert. And down below the center console, you do have additional storage space as well as a 12 volt and USB charge ports, uh, which is very handy in Hyundai SUVs. Now moving up top, this one being the beige interior does have a beige headliner. There's your incandescent lighting, auto dimming interior rear view mirror with garage home link. Like I said, this is a nice aspect of the blue hybrid, uh, given that it is a little bit cheaper than the SL premium, which you have to buy that trim to get that in the gas powered Santa Fe's. Blue link SOS, overhead incandescent lighting, and uh, that's about it up top as there is no sunroof on this particular trim level. But again, the price point does reflect that. Um, it is quite competitive. So let's go ahead and take a look at the back seat, see what some of the amenities are there. Here in the back seat, most of the materials will follow through from the front. So you have the same accented door panel with the beige insert, a nice pattern speaker grill there with a good amount of storage lower on. You do get the manual window side shades, which again are borrowed from the SL Premium. Really nice aspect of that. And coming to the rear seats, these do have the reclinability like standard on every Santa Fe out there. They do not slide, however, so that is not an aspect or functionality of these seats, but of course they do recline. Now there's a look at the front dashboard. Out back, you do have rear AC vents, two USB-A charge ports, similar to that of the base SEL, one map pocket on the passenger side. And you do have a center folding, you do have a center armrest with two cup holders, all beige accented in color, and the seats do fold down 60-40 split. There's your incandescent overhead lighting. And there's your ultrasonic rear occupant alert. So yeah, pretty nice back seat. I really do like the cloth material on this particular vehicle. I think it's extremely soft, especially when you compare it to some of the other vehicles out there. Now coming around to the back, this does have the power tailgate with programmable height. So you can simply program the height at any time by holding down the button for about three to five seconds. Take a look behind the second row seats. The Santa Fe has a ton of storage capacity, even here with this cargo cover, uh, which is one of the aspects I really like. You can adjust it as well, depending on where the rear seat reclines are. Uh, so there is a two position uh, thing for that. Underneath the floor, you do have a little bit of storage space taken up by the 12 volt battery, and you do not get a spare tire with the hybrids as well. You do get a tire mobility kit seen right there, but up front a little bit further, there is more under floor storage which is just immense in this vehicle, and you really don't see it in many SUVs out there. So that is one of the nice aspects of any Santa Fe uh, that I do enjoy. Another thing you do get from the SCL Premium Package here on the blue trim is the power folding release second row seats. So by pushing that button, it'll power release and fold down the seats because they are going to be spring loaded. And there is a 12 volt outlet back here as well. So take a look at the passenger front seat. All the materials and the colors are gonna be the same as the driver's side. You do not get a power passenger seat and there is no height adjustment. So this is just a standard four-way manual seat. There's a better look at the beige dashboard. You do have a little bit of storage right here above that. There's your glove box. Good amount of room inside, no illumination or anything like that. Uh, but overall, I really do like the blue trim of the hybrid because this blank, because this blends a bunch of the standard SEL equipment with a few items from the SEL Premium, which I think make it a very good value. Let's go ahead and take a look under the hood, see what powers this particular vehicle, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up this video. So under the hood of the Santa Fe Hybrid, you will find the 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder paired to a six speed automatic transmission, and of course a small battery pack with an electric motor. This puts out a combined horsepower rating of 226 horsepower, and Hyundai does not provide the combined torque figure, but I would say it's somewhere in the low to mid 200 pound-feet of torque range, uh, given this engine alone is typically just under 200 pound-feet of torque. So very stout powertrain, um, and a very adequate at that for the size of vehicle. And it is really impressive, the MPG figures that this vehicle is able to achieve uh, with the electric motor, the battery pack, and just the overall fuel-efficient small four-cylinder engine, um, as the fuel efficiency is in the mid 30 mile per gallon range with the smaller wheels and tires and uh, just overall size of this vehicle. So like I said, I really do think the hybrid is a very good value out there, especially if you're looking to save just a little bit of money on fuel costs over that of the standard four cylinder.
So that's gonna do it for this video on the 2023 Hyundai Santa Fe Blue Hybrid trim level. I know it's a little bit confusing with the blue thrown in there and the vehicle itself is red or just a different color, but uh, that is what Hyundai calls most of the base trim levels in their hybrid lineup. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video or found something helpful, make sure to hit that like button below. It greatly helps out the channel in these videos. Subscribe if you guys are not already subscribed. If you're interested in any other trim levels of many makes and models out there, including the Hyundai Santa Fe, make sure to check out the channel as they have pretty much every other trim level covered, including the limited hybrid. And I don't have the calligraphy, but that should be coming shortly to the channel pending it doesn't sell here in the next day or so. So make sure to be on the lookout for that if you're interested in the calligraphy walk around video. Uh, but nonetheless, I have a ton of comparison videos and trim level walk arounds here on the channel already. So make sure to check all that out. Now quickly before we wrap up this video, I do wanna cover the pricing information. So the SEL all wheel drive gas version of the Santa Fe starts out at $35,485 including destination. Now the SEL premium all wheel drive in the gas is $40,135 including destination. And the blue hybrid is actually in between these two almost directly in the middle at $37,545. Now of course the one we're sitting in is over 38 because of the extra cost color and accessories. Uh, but that is pretty much on every Hyundai vehicle depending on how they equip it from the factory. And you can't basically choose what comes on it in terms of the accessories. Uh, so every vehicle will deviate a few hundred dollars to a thousand dollars from this price point. Uh, but nonetheless, at $37,545, that's almost directly between the base SEL and the SEL Premium, and you are getting the hybrid powertrain, which I think is a huge bonus, and a couple of amenities, like I mentioned, including those four items from the SEL Premium for a lower price point. So I wanna hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think of the blue hybrid? Do you think it's the best value in the lineup? Is there a different trim of the Santa Fe or just another vehicle in general you think is a better value? Hopefully you guys enjoyed as always, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.